Good morning. Welcome to our virtual service. It's good to be here together with you all to worship our God. As is our custom, I'm going to ring our bell, and our bell says that worship has started. Now, before we go into the time of worship, what I want you to do is I want you to take all your worries, all your anger, all your cares, everything, put it behind you, set it aside, forget about it. Forget about it for about the next 30 minutes because we don't want anything interfering with our worship of God. And you can, you can set aside your cares for that amount of time. Well, now that worship has started, I'd like to do another thing to stop any separation from God. I'd like to lead us in a time of confession because we know that sin separates us from God. We don't want anything separating us from God during this time. So I'm going to lead us, and I'll even leave a time of silence that you can do any kind of business that you need to do with God. Let's, let's bow our heads and close our eyes and let's pray. Father, it is good to be here. Father, thanks for being here. Jesus, thanks for being here. Spirit, thanks for being here. It is good to be here. Father, you know that sometimes we do what you don't want us to do, and sometimes we do things that, 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 that offend you. Father, sometimes we lust after something we shouldn't lust after. Sometimes we're not kind to one another. Sometimes we get angry. Sometimes we gossip. God, you know all things. Please, please, God, forgive us for those things that we do that offend you. And Father, in, this, in the quiet of this time, we're going to confess any sins we need to confess to you. And Father, I thank you for your great promise that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's good to be forgiven. Well, now we are going to recite John 1, 1 and 2 together. John 1, verses 1 to 2. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And now Linda is going to lead us in our first song, Hallelujah, What a Savior. Yeah. 
now please join me as we sing, There is a Redeemer. Now it's time for us to go to prayer. Well, we've already done our confession, and the next thing we like to do is some praise. And we're gonna praise God for who he is. And first we're gonna praise God because he's great. God, I praise you because you're great. And we're gonna praise God because he is creator. God, we praise you, praise you because you're creator. And we're gonna praise God because he's everywhere. God, we praise you because you're everywhere. You're here and you're where the people are. You are everywhere. It's an amazing thing. And God, we praise you because you're holy. God, we praise you because you're holy. And God, we praise you because you're good. God, we praise you because you're good and that you're forgiving. God, we praise you that you're a forgiving God and that you're merciful. God, we praise you because you're merciful. And we could go on all day just thinking about God and who he is. And I encourage you to do that at some point today, even maybe even bed tonight when, when you can't sleep. And now we want to spend some time thanking God. We've done confession. We've done some praising. Now we want to, now we want to take some time thanking God. And God, today I want to thank you for family. God, we thank you for family and for friends. God, we Thank you for friends, and we thank you for Jesus. God, we thank you for Jesus. Where would we be without Jesus? And we thank you for food. God, we thank you for food, and um, we thank you for the forgiveness you give us. God, we thank you for forgiveness and for the AIDS that take care of us. God, we thank you for the AIDS and for uh, the nurses that take care of us. God, we thank you for the nurses. And we thank you for the protection you've given us from the coronavirus. Thank God. We thank you that we've been protected from the coronavirus. And we could go on and on and on. And I encourage you to do that. Maybe even go through the alphabet. Think of something that starts with A that you're thankful for. And then B or however you want to do it. There's no set way. Just thank God. Recognize what it is that God has done. And thank him for it. And now we're going to go through. And our fourth type of prayer is supplication. So we're going to pray some supplication. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, Father, I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak with you in prayer. It is such an amazing thing. We can climb up on your lap and call you daddy. And it's so amazing that you listen to our prayers. Father, I want to pray for the people who are in the nursing home and in all the nursing homes around, all those that might get this video. Father, I pray that you'd protect them, protect them from the coronavirus. Father, I also pray you'd protect them from pain. God, you know they, um, that you know how bad pain can be and it doesn't have to be 
bring their medicine on time, help the medications work, heal them, heal them if that's, that, if that's the way you want to do it. Well, however, keep these people from pain. Father, keep these people from being lonely. Don't let them be lonely, especially during the time when they're stuck in their rooms. Father, and, and, and Father, don't let them be anxious. Don't let them be anxious. Send your spirit, give them peace. And Father, I pray for every person who hears this prayer that you show them just how much you love them in some special way this week. And I pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. So I wanna ask you a question. Do you believe in extraterrestrial life? Do you believe that um, there's life on other planets? Say, on the, well, there's not life on the moon, but what, what about maybe life on Mars? Or do you believe in life on maybe there's a planet going around Alpha Centauri, the nearest star? Or maybe one of those billions of stars has a planet around it that has life on it. Maybe even that life is sentient like us, I don't know. Some alien, or maybe they don't look like us, I don't know. Uh, do you believe in that? Well, you know, the truth is I don't, but I really, really enjoy watching science fiction shows that talk about that talk about jetting around the galaxy and meeting alien lives. And uh, Linda and I watch all kinds of science fiction all the time. Remember E.T.? And we love that show, E.T. And we watch a show right now called Star Trek The Next Generation with John Luke Picard. And they go around the galaxies and they have super warp drive and they have adventures with all these goofy looking aliens. And every time, every episode, there's some earth-shaking, world-shaking, universe-shaking thing, and they always come right up to the deadline and they solve the problem, either using technology or, or something. But anyway, it's kind of fun to think about. It's kind of fun to think about. Um, I want you to hold that thought. Now, over today and next Sunday and the Sunday after that, maybe the following Sunday after that, I am going to talk to you about outrageous things that Jesus said. And Jesus did. He said some outrageous things. And uh, today I'm, I'm going to talk about where Jesus is from and how old Jesus is and what he claimed about that. But I'm going to start with what the Apostle John said about Jesus. Now, the Apostle John wrote the book of John, and he starts the book of John with a summary of who he believes Jesus is. And I want to read that to you because it's an amazing thing. John says this talking about who Jesus is. John says, in the beginning was the Word. Everybody knows the Word is Jesus. In the beginning was the Word. What does that mean? In the beginning of what? Well, in the beginning of time. In the beginning when God created energy, when God created matter, there was Jesus. And, uh, and uh, he goes on. He said, and the Word, Jesus was with God, and the word Jesus was God. He was with God in the beginning. That's outrageous. What can we learn from this? Well, where was God? God was in heaven. John is saying Jesus was in heaven with God at the beginning of time. He also says that he was with God and was God, and that gets, gets into the Trinity. We're not going to talk about so much about the Trinity today. We're going to talk about that another time. But I want to get to the point that, that John believed that in the beginning of all time, before he was born, in the beginning of all time, Jesus was with God in heaven. So where do you think John got such an idea? You think he made that up? You think he made up all this stuff? No. He got that idea from things that Jesus said to him. See, John followed Jesus for three years, and he knew everything Jesus had said and everything Jesus had done. And John wrote this down based on what Jesus said. So now, let's look and see what Jesus said about himself. First, <clears throat> John 8, 58, 58. Jesus says this, he says, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was born, I am. Truly, truly, I say, before Abraham was born, I am. Now, Abraham lived 2,000 years before Jesus. So what's Jesus saying? He's saying, truly, truly, I say to you, over 2,000 years ago, I existed. Huh. What, what is he saying? He's saying pretty clearly to me that I existed 
before I was born. Or Jesus said he, would, he existed before he was born. He's also claiming to be God because when he uses the word I am, I am is the word that describes God. And he clearly claimed to be God. But, um, but for, for us today, I'm interested in the fact that he claimed to exist before he was born. <clears throat> Let's see what else Jesus said. Hmm. John six fifty one. Oh, I'm sorry, John six thirty eight. Jesus said, I have come down from heaven. Oh, that's pretty clear. Jesus says, I have come down from heaven. Where was Jesus before he was born? He was in heaven. He says the same thing in uh, John six fifty one. He says, I'm the living bread that came down out of heaven. He said, I was in heaven before I was born. And in talking to the Jewish leaders, he was all the time arguing with the Jewish leaders, wasn't he? But anyway, he has this to say to the Jewish leaders, John 8, 23. He said, you are from below, I am from above heaven. You are of this world, I am not of this world. Oh, that's pretty clear. Jesus says, I am not of this world. He claimed to be an alien, it seems to me. It seems to me that he's claiming to be an alien. And he wasn't of this world, was he? If he was from heaven, he was not of this world. He was from heaven. John 12, 46 says, I have come as a light into the world. He says, I had a purpose. I came into this world. I left heaven where I was before, and I came purposefully into this world. I did it in my own accord. Uh, John 16, 28. This was the night before Jesus was crucified. He was talking to his disciples and he said this. You know, he's telling his disciples, he says, I came forth from the Father and have come into the world. I am leaving the world again and going to the Father. What is he claiming? I have come from heaven. I had a job to do. Once I'm crucified, died, and raised from the dead. He didn't say that here, but that, that was what's implied. I'm going to leave the world. I'm going to go back to heaven. I'm going to go back to the Father. Uh, John 17, 5, later that evening, Jesus was praying, and he says this. He says, Now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Whoa. With the glory which I had with you before the world was. What's Jesus saying? He's saying, I had, you and I had the same glory, Father. Before the world was, before the existence of time, I was there with you and we shared glory and I've left that glory and I came down, came down to earth. Isn't that amazing? Jesus is making outrageous claims here. He's claiming he's not of this world. He's claiming he came down from heaven. He claimed that he was there at the beginning. He pre-existed before his birth and that he had a job to do. Well, I'm going to tell you, if I told you that I existed before I was born, on August 25th, 1947, that I existed before that, I was living in a different place, but I came and then I, then, then, but I existed before I was born, you'd think I was crazy. Because the truth is, on August 25th, 1947, that's when time started for me. That, that's when I was born. But uh, so the question is, why should we believe Jesus? Why in the world would we believe these outrageous claims of Jesus? Well, I'm going to give you three reasons why I think you can believe that what Jesus says is true. The first of those reasons is the miracles Jesus did. And think about all the miracles. He changed the water into wine. He walked on water. He calmed the sea, healed all those people. You know, I was thinking about one, uh, one particular miracle that was kind of, kind of not completely unique, but it was a very interesting miracle because, um, because of Jesus' purpose. You see, Jesus and his disciples were together one day, along with a crowd of people that always followed him. And Jesus led them to a pool not too far from the, um, from the temple. And there were a bunch of people next to that pool that were all sick. People that couldn't walk, people that couldn't see, all, all kinds of different diseases. And the reason they were there was because, one reason was because it was on the way to the temple and they used to beg, that's all they could do. And people would feel all holy as they were going to the temple and they'd give them money. 
and uh, so that that's that's why they were there. There was also some rumor about about uh, or um, uh, uh, legend about being healed, but but Jesus went and he saw all these people, and he picked one out in particular. He singled out one person who was blind from birth, and he went over to that person. And Jesus knew he was blind from birth, and to ask that person, he said, "Would you like to have your sight?" And the guy said, well, yeah, I'd love to have my sight. I've never seen it. I, I, yeah, please, please uh, give me my sight. And Jesus said, you got your sight. And the guy's sight came back. Well, the reason that this is such an important miracle is that this man was blind from birth. The Jewish leaders called this guy in because they didn't believe Jesus really did a miracle. And they said, did he do this miracle? And the guy said, he said, he certainly did. I was blind from birth. I never saw it all before Jesus healed me. And they said, well, I'm not sure we believe you. They called in his parents. And his parents said, yeah, that's my son. That's my son. He was, they were, they were, he was blind from birth. He never saw before Jesus healed him. Called in, they talked to the friends and the relatives of this man. And there was absolute proof that Jesus did this miracle. See, they couldn't deny it. And, 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 and because of this and other miracles, even the Jewish leaders, even the people who hated Jesus, didn't deny that Jesus did the miracles. Absolutely, Jesus did these miracles. And, um, and um, in fact, what the Jewish leadership did, they started accusing him of doing the miracles in the power of Satan, which is, which is ridiculous, but that's the only excuse they had. You either had to believe or you had to find some excuse, and that's the way they explained it away. Which, uh, which was a stupid thing because everybody that knows anything about Jesus knew that he didn't do things in the power of Satan. So one reason I believe that what Jesus says can be trusted and is true is because of the miracles. Another reason is because Jesus fulfilled ancient prophecies concerning Messiah. And these prophecies were written down into the Old Testament. Some of them were 500 years before Jesus, 500 years before Jesus. Some of them 750, some of them 1,000, some of them even 1,500 years before Jesus, there were prophecies written about the Messiah. And I want to read one of these. Now, there's a hundred of these, but I just want to read one to you um, today just to give you an idea for how powerful this stuff is. <clears throat> um, Isaiah 35, 5 to 6 says this, Then the eyes of the blind will be opened, and the ears of the death will be unstopped. Then the lame will leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute will shout for joy. Well, who's that, who's that talking about? <laughs> talking about Jesus. Who else in all of history healed people that couldn't see, healed people that couldn't walk, and uh, healed people who couldn't hear and couldn't speak? Who else? Well, Jesus. He's the only one that has done these great miracles. No one else has ever been able to do that. And uh, so they prophecy clearly is about Jesus. And there were many, many, many more prophecies. The third reason that I can trust Jesus, in my mind, is that Jesus knew the future. He knew what was going to happen all the time. Let me just give you one, one, one example. This is kind of, kind of a simple example. And uh, taken alone, you wouldn't think that this was so, so great. But it was, it was near that Passover time, just before Jesus was crucified. And uh, his disciples come up to him and said, Jesus, Jesus, where are we going to eat the Passover meal? And uh, Jesus, says, um, Jesus says, let me tell you what I want you to do. What I want you to do is I want you to go into this town. And when you get there, you're going to find a guy and the guy's carrying a pitcher of water. Now, what is so interesting is in those days, only women carried water. Men didn't carry it. It was a job reserved for women. But he said, you're going to see a man carrying a water pot. Uh, you follow that man into a house, Jesus said. When you get in the house, tell him that Jesus needs, needs the room. And he's going to tell you, okay, you can have the room. And um, that's exactly what happened. The uh, disciples went into the town. They looked around, found a guy who was carrying a water pot followed him to a house. He went into the house. They went in and they said, the master uh, wants to celebrate Passover. And he says, yep, I got it all prepared upstairs. And Jesus knew exactly what was going to happen. And, and so, so three reasons why I believe Jesus. One, the miracles. Two, all the prophecies written about Jesus. And third, that Jesus himself 
so it could tell details about what was going to happen. So when I trust Jesus, when he said he came from heaven to do a job and went back to heaven, had the glory that uh, he had God's glory at the beginning of time he was there, I believe him. I believe him. You know, Jesus said some other outrageous things. And one of the things he said, he said, if you believe in me, if you believe in me, you'll live forever. Jesus says, if you believe in me, after you die, I myself, Jesus, will come and take you to heaven, give you a resurrected body, and you're going to be there forever with me and with the Father. That's Jesus' great promise, the great promise of Christianity. And I believe that that's true because of the miracles, because of the prophecy, both Jesus' predicted prophecy and the prophecy predicted about Jesus. You know, I don't know where you are with God and with His Son, Jesus. My question is, do you believe? Do you believe? Remember the famous verse? It says, For God so loved the world that He sent out of heaven, Jesus came out of heaven, that God sent His only, be only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. And I'm going to pray, and I'm going to ask you to declare your belief, and I'd like you to repeat after me. Let's bow our heads. Father, say after me, Father, I believe in you, and I believe in your Son, Jesus. I believe he came down from heaven and was born of that virgin and taught and went to the cross to die to pay the penalty for my sins. I'm sorry for the bad things that I've done. Forgive me based on what Jesus did. Come into my heart, Jesus. I want to go to heaven. I want to be where you are forever. In Jesus' name, amen. And now Linda's going to lead us in the final song. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My dad to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My dad to pay from the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My dad to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way, from the earth to the cross, my dead to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high.
I want to thank you for worshiping with us today. But before we leave, I want to lay a blessing on you. This is from Numbers, chapter 6, verses 24 to 26. It says, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Men and women, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And other than that, there's only one other thing for us to say. Aloha. See you there.